Otherwise, just give me a signal once it's gone through at least once.
Welcome to worship this morning at First English Lutheran Church in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. If you're joining us from around here, you know we had a beautiful snow last night and God has given us some beautiful scenery again this morning. If you're from far away and you have sunshine, well, whatever. <laughs> We're happy for you too. Um, I'd like to welcome those who are here with us today, Dave Miller on the keyboard and also as a singer, Eric and Tanya Wangan are here as singers and Dave and Sue Davies. Dave will also be our reader this morning. My husband Horace Davis is here and Rhonda Felton and Becky and Mark Stoltz are in the sound booth. We're glad that you're here and it's good to worship together even though we're not in the same location at the same time. Um, today we do have our annual meeting at 11 a.m. Those of you who have signed up to join on Zoom, just remember we will be starting promptly at 11, so please get in there a little bit early so you've got your technical details worked out when we start. There is still room for you to come to the meeting in person. You would need to be masked, and of course we'll be social distanced. There are, um, pl there's plenty of room. There are not that many people coming in person. So feel free to join in person if you haven't signed up. Um, a sadness to report to you this morning, uh, May Knuth passed away last evening, and we are mourning with her family, and we'll be praying for them later and throughout the next week and the next months. Um, but she's home, and we're, we're glad for that. She um, is in a reality we can't even conceive of. So please remember... May's family in prayer. Also, I just want to mention in your bulletin, there's an explanation in there that council would like you to understand a little better if you don't already. The two funds we have, while the one is a fund, it's called an agape fund, and the other is our Stewardship for All Seasons initiative for our community. And I would suggest that you take a good look at that and read it over because it might um, answer some questions you're having. Those are the announcements for this morning. Let's just bow our heads and enter into silent prayer for a few moments to prepare our hearts for worship. We enter your presence, Lord, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please reverence our hearts as we come into your presence. Give us minds that can settle down a little from the week. Help us to realize this privilege of being so close to you. Enable us to hear your message through song and reading and word. Whatever we need the most in our lives, we know that your Holy Spirit will touch us with your truth. And now we ask for your blessing upon all aspects of this service, that your voice will come through loud and clear to each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources 
and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. Let's sing to you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, you. with you. Let us sing together praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The psalm today is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. Read responsibly by verse. For God alone, I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put, Put no trust in extortion. extortion. In, in robbery, take no empty pride. pride. Though, Though wealth increase, 
Set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Set to love, love belongs to you, O Lord, for, for you repay all according to their deeds. Hi, kids. It's time for the children's sermon. Good to see you all this morning. How are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, she's really, really happy today. Is it because it snowed and you get to play outside today? Are you going to build a snowman? She said, if it, if it packs. Yeah, that's always the question, isn't it? Hey, Faith, do you love everybody? Hmm. Oh, she said, not people who are really different from her are people who don't like her, are people who don't agree with her, are people who do things that bother her. Is that true? I kind of made some of that up, but is that true? But it's really hard to like people like that. I know. All of us have a little problem with that, even big people, even pastors. Yeah. So why do you think Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself? He doesn't know. Don't you think maybe he realized sometimes people around us would drive us crazy? He didn't say love your neighbor as yourself because it's easy. Then he wouldn't have had to say anything. He said it because he knew it would be kind of hard. Yeah, so can we just decide I'm going to love everybody and then love everybody? said she doesn't think it works that way. It doesn't. It's really, really important that when we want to love people that we don't even like, we ask Jesus to help us because he will give us what we need to love people that we don't even like. I know he would do that for you. Do you think you're going to let him do that for you? Will you ask him? Yeah, I'm going to ask him too. Because right now, in our world, there are a lot of people who don't like each other and even bully each other. I, I don't like bullies either. So we have to even pray to love bullies. Yeah, we'll talk about it more in the sermon. Right now, let's just pray and ask God to help us learn to love our neighbors. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we like to pick the people we want to love, and they're usually people who like us back. But you tell us to love our neighbors, and that's hard, especially if they're not good neighbors. Help us to rely on you for love and to let you change our hearts so we can love others. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, everybody. scripture for the sermon today is from the book of Jonah, the third chapter. 
The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Assyria was a bully. Back about 750 years before Jesus was born, Assyria was the bully. They were a constant threat to the Israelites. They were brutal. They used torture to bring people into submission. And Israel lived in absolute fear of them. And then in 722 BC, they Syria came and just decimated the northern kingdom of Israel. And they kept the southern kingdom as vassals or as slaves for over 100 years. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria, and it had been around since prehistoric times. In other words, it had been around long enough to become exceedingly evil. Here's how the prophet Nahum described Nineveh. Woe to the city of blood, full of lies, full of plunder, never without victims. The crack of whips, the clatter of wheels, galloping horses and jolting chariots, charging cavalry, flashing swords and glittering spears. Many casualties, piles of dead, bodies without number, people stumbling over corpses. Truly, Nineveh was the bully of bullies. It was a place so wicked that God had to stop its inhumanity, its bloodthirst, and its injustice. And yet, before God stepped in to destroy them, God gave them a second chance. He contacts one of his prophets to communicate with Nineveh on God's behalf. So we're going to pretend for a few minutes, okay? Let's listen in on a conversation between God and God's Hebrew prophet, Jonah. Hello? Hi, Jonah. It's me, God. Listen. Things are terrible over there, about 500 miles to your east in Nineveh. It's a reign of terror, and I have to put an end to it. Really? Wow, that's awesome. I hope you don't mind my my saying so, but it's about time. What are you going to do to them? Well, I'm going to destroy them in 40 days. But Jonah, it's breaking my heart. There are 120,000 people there, plus animals. They're my children, and I care about them. God, it's going to be kind of hard for you to find anyone to agree with you about that. I mean, to be really honest with you, God, I absolutely hate them. They have been a terror to us. And remember, God, we're your chosen people. We're your favorite children. You love us the most, right? You must really hate it when they bully us and strike fear into our hearts. The favorite child thing is another conversation, Jonah. However, right now, I'm calling on you as my prophet to pack your bags and head east to Nineveh. I know, I know. It's about 500 miles, and it's going to take a while to get there, so plan ahead. Now, here's the important part. Listen carefully. When you get to Nineveh, I want you to preach against it. 
I'll take you, it'll take you about three days to walk through the city. It's okay with me if you preach as you walk. Just get the message out. Tell them I'm going to destroy them in 40 days because of their violent wickedness. That's it. That's all you need to say, but be forceful, okay? Oh, and remember, I'm counting on you. Give you a visual of this. If Jonah had lived here in Wisconsin Rapids, God was telling him to head to Toronto, Ontario as the crow flies, or to Detroit, Michigan as the car drives. Well, Jonah didn't want any of this. He does an about face, and he boards a boat for Tarshish, which is about 2,000 miles to the west of where he was at the moment. A violent storm comes up, and Jonah realizes God is expressing anger at his disobedience. So he tells the sailors to just throw him into the water. Obviously, he'd rather drown than obey God and go to Nineveh. But God thwarts that plan and graciously comes to his rescue. A big fish swallows him, and Jonah lives in that slimy place just long enough to realize that being in the belly of a big fish is even worse than dying. So he prays a psalm and promises God that he will sacrifice to God and keep his vows to God. And the big fish just vomits him up onto dry land. So now we've reached our text for today. You just had to know the background story first. This is Jonah's second chance to obey God. And this time he heads east to Nineveh. And when he gets there, he walks about a third of the way into Nineveh, preaching the shortest sermon ever preached. It was only five words in Hebrew. In English, it's eight words. Forty more days and Nineveh will be overturned. Well, wonder of wonders. The people believe God and they do an about face and they repent. A repent means that they change. Maybe that's because they know they're wicked and sometimes it's easier to repent when it's obvious that you need to. Well, they declare a fast, and they wear sackcloth, which is like burlap, and this is a sign of their penitence and their grief over their sins. And the king does them one better. He orders all the people and all the animals to fast from water and food and to wear sackcloth. So now there are thousands of people wearing sackcloth and sitting in ashes, and there are also animals wearing sackcloth, and no one's eating and no one's drinking. And the king proclaims, let everyone call urgently on God. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Even this wicked king knows that God's love just might be greater than God's anger. And God's love could override his wrath. Now, notice something about God. He's shown remarkable grace and patience to Jonah throughout this entire ordeal. He saved him from drowning. He gave him a second chance to obey and he's kept him safe as he walked into Nineveh and pronounced judgment on all the people. And now God even reveals more of his character by being gracious to Nineveh. God relents. God changes his mind. And he has compassion on these violent, evil people. And he does not bring destruction on them. Well, at the same time, Jonah's pretty much wearing a t-shirt that says, no grace allowed for bullies. Enemies do not deserve compassion. People who've made my life miserable deserve destruction. 
Are you listening, God? What? Do you have any right to be this angry? Well, yes, I do. This is why I headed west instead of east. This is why I disobeyed. I knew you were going to be gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and full of love. I knew you were going to relent from sending disaster to my enemies. And now you have. And it just makes me sick and angry. And I'd rather die than look over there at Nineveh and see them claiming to be forgiven for their sins and claiming to be your children. This is the worst possible outcome. I just wish I could die. Well, in spite of Jonah's hard heart and his drama queen behavior, God kept being gracious to him. God sent a vine to grow over his shelter so that he could be in the shade. And Jonah was happy about that. But then a worm came the next day and ate the vine, and now Jonah's so angry again that he wants to die. God chides him, and in our text, it sounds to me like a gentle chiding, but I guess that depends on how you read it. I hear God's voice as one that is still patient and still gracious, even as he deals with the bully that Jonah has become. Jonah, you're so upset about that stupid vine, so upset that you want to die, but you don't care about 120,000 people plus animals, and that's where we are really different. I care about them. I'm concerned about that great city. And that's where the story ends. Jonah, a prophet of God, has been offered grace repeatedly, and he doesn't receive it into his heart. The Gentiles, the violent people, the non-Hebrew people, the wicked ones, have been offered God's grace, and they repent of their sins and receive God's grace. What are we supposed to make of this? I know it could be very easy to just leave the story here, but let's take it into our own lives because we are a lot like Jonah. Many of us have had bullies in our lives they can be in our families, in our workplaces. They can even be in our churches, in our government, in social organizations. We fear them. And if we're honest, we hate them. But we're going to go even a little deeper into this right now because it's a big part of our lives right now. Within this listening audience, there are probably about 50% of you who think the Democrats are bullies, and another 50% of you who think former President Trump and the Republicans are bullies. All of us who follow current events have felt anger and hatred within ourselves toward our perceived bullies. We didn't know we could be this angry and hateful. We thought we were nicer than this. But our feelings are very visceral because we feel truly wronged. And many of us feel in danger of losing our country, our democracy, our personal freedoms, our way of life. And so we do not wish good for the bullies. And if God were to send us to speak God's words of grace to them, or even to pray for them, we would probably run in the other direction and climb into a boat and ask to be thrown into a stormy ocean, and we maybe would even live inside the slimy fish belly and regret the day we were born. And we feel justified in that slimy belly of anger, hatred, fear, and bitterness. 
But given enough time to reflect, we might discover we're acting like bullies ourselves, just like Jonah. And we'd realize we don't really want to change. Neither can we force ourselves to change. Nor can we force ourselves to be gracious and loving like God. It simply is not possible to do that on our own. But here are gracious words for us. God is greater than the bully that's within each of us. And God is greater than all the bullies who have hurt us. You see, God's grace extends to everyone. With God, everyone gets a second chance, even bullies, even you and even me. As I wrote this sermon, I found myself fighting against it. You see, first, my sermons are, first of all, a word to me. And I found myself thinking, I want my supposed right to hate bullies. But that's not what God calls us to do. And God knows we can't do it in our own strength either, to love our bullies. We are called to turn to Jesus with our helplessness. For in Jesus we find the forgiveness and the strength that will change our hearts. As our hearts are changed by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, we can be made new. We can be given the graciousness of God. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, there were so many bullies in your life. You forgave them while they were killing you. And you have given them and us a second chance. Please forgive me, forgive us for being just like Jonah and make us new. Give us the love and the strength and the power to be just like you. Amen. Let's sing together, Change My Heart, O oh God. Change my heart, O oh God. Forgiven and redeemed children of God, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for council and ministry members, for musicians, for readers, for all that proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth, and for each of us, that we will value the beauty of nature and care for it tenderly. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those who provide leadership, especially our own national and state governments at this time of transition and at this time of change, that there will be cooperation and the desire to care well for all people. We pray for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations for planning commissions and homeless advocates, for those in our own community who strive to bring justice and opportunity to all. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, especially the family of May Knuth, who are mourning her passing, and also for the hundreds of thousands of people who are grief-stricken because they have lost loved ones to COVID-related death. We pray for the outcast and all who await relief, especially the unemployed and underemployed, that they will receive help that will bring lasting change. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the relationships we maintain in our families, in our congregation, and in our community, that God's steadfast love will serve as a model for all of our relationships. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, we pray that we will continue to be pointed to salvation through their example and through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, we know that you are hearing our prayers, whether we have spoken them or they are silent. We know that you hear us for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also also with with you. you. Please share the peace of the Lord with those who are with you. And if you're alone, please know we are sharing the Lord's peace with you right now. For our offering today, we have five of our choir members here. And we're going to sing the song, The Light of the World. A little remotely where we stand, but it's one you'll recognize. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. Hallelujah. Jesus is the light of the world. And we will is the light of the world. When there is trouble, we need to go astray. He will shine, yes, he will shine. Jesus will help you find your way. He will 
for that number and thank you for your giving your generosity continues to keep our ministry on an even keel here at first english lutheran let us pray oh god receive these gifts as you receive us like a mother receives her child and with arms wide open nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same kind of love, through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also and with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels in the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed our lord jesus took the bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you as often as you do this remember me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, remember me. God of new life, 
pour out out your your Holy Spirit Spirit on us and on on these these gifts of bread and wine. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us out alive with justice, peace, hope, and love. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's pray in the words Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today, as we share in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to join in wherever you are. If you believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior and dwells within you, you are so welcome here as you share in his life and his presence. Um, The table is set. We invite you to prepare to receive. As I say, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you, at those times, share wherever you are. And also you can offer it to the people next to you at home if you like. And bless the children. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life, and we are strengthened now for our journey. 
Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together as we close our service. I want to walk as a child of the light. peace be the light of christ thanks, thanks be, be to god. god have a great week everyone we'll see you next week